Today on She Is, I sit down with Elisaveta Jordanova, choreographer, performer, and the founder and artistic director of Gorana Dance, a dance company dedicated to spread the beauty of the Bulgarian folk dances in the U.S. and maintain Bulgarian folk traditions across borders. Elisaveta Yordanova established a professional teaching, creating, and performing practice in U.S. in 2005. After 15 years of collecting in-depth knowledge of the Bulgarian folkloric heritage. Inspired by an ancient culture, rituals, and myths, today Elisaveta conducts dance residences, creative workshops, and master dance classes for a diverse population of students all within a single vision, the preservation of Bulgarian folk dance. Elisaveta is a frequent guest teacher at conferences, numerous communities and college dance programs in New York. Welcome to She Is and thank you for watching Woman to Woman TV. I'm Lucia Dragos and with me today I have a special guest, Elisaveta Jordanova. Elisaveta, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. Now, you conduct creative workshops and master classes with the vision to preserve the Bulgarian culture. What inspired you in the Bulgarian culture? Everything. Bulgaria is more than 13th century old country, and um, my life happened to be in such a way that I was uh, uh, inspired from my grandmother, from my mother, and from my family in early ages to learn and to practice the Bulgarian folklore. Uh, then some of my studies were connected with this, so I took the path to be um, the one who can bring this to my students, to my peers, to my friends, to my jobs, to everywhere. In New York, In New York. specifically. Did you start as a dancer or a singer in Bulgaria? No, dance was my first uh, media of expression, and uh, as, as I said, I first danced in my kitchen with my mother, in the kitchen with my grandmother, and uh, then I participated in after-school dance programs as a um, student uh, up until my high school, and then I took on uh, studying a little bit more serious about Bulgarian folk dances, so dance forever. <laughs> dance forever. I like that. And now Bulgaria, I know it's separated because I'm from Bulgaria, but I don't know a lot about Bulgarian yes. folk. Uh, besides the fact that we were dancing in school a little bit in physical education, but I know there are different regions and yes. the dances are different. Which one in yes. particular you started dancing when you were I'm little? I'm from uh, Sofia, so mm -hmm. Shopska, Obla, uh, Shopska region, that's what's the name of it. There are six major regions in Bulgaria, uh, North Central, North East, uh, Tracia, uh, South around Plovdiv, Stranja, close to Black Sea, and the mountain uh, Pirin and Rodopi, and of course Sofia, uh, the central western. And every, you know how small Bulgaria is as a country, every single region is so different from one mm -hmm. another. Um, and one horo, let's say so-called Pravo horo, is um, absolutely different in, in each region. Uh, costumes are different, architecture is different, so this speaks a lot and that's very inspirational. Not only to study, but to practice and to present it and to preserve it. Which one is your favorite region? Of course, Sofia. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> now you came to New York how many years ago? Um, I came to, I moved to live to New York, uh, to live to New York uh, 12 years ago, but I studied uh, in 1998 for two years, I did a master's degree, um, then I returned back to Bulgaria for four years, and in 2004 I moved in permanently. <laughs> and did you come to New York with the mission to spread the word about the Bulgarian culture, or it sort of came as a gradual progression from something else that you were working on? 
It's a very interesting phenomenon because uh, when I came in uh, 1998 to do a master's degree, it was a uh, contemporary dance. And I was very much immersed in, in that uh, particular uh, dance style. And uh, when I returned to Bulgaria, I had a company in modern dance, in contemporary uh, art. And um, I didn't think much about Bulgarian folklore then, yet my thesis research was, can I use some of the Bulgarian folk vocabulary and movements and manipulate the movement in such way that I can use them in contemporary work. And this was very interesting uh, research for a year and a half. But when I returned permanently, I continued to do contemporary work for a while. Uh, but everybody was asking me, oh, how did you start? How, where this interest to dance comes from? And of course, I s t told the story about my family. I told the story about really studying um, professionally and dancing. Before I uh, did my um, theater degree <laughs> and dance degree in contemporary degree, um, and peop for some reason, in a very natural way, I was invited for lectures, for demonstrations, and I did my first one in 2005 in folk, in not folk, okay. completely in folk lecture demonstration for an hour and 15 minutes in a mini workshop. And this was in a yoga studio, Ananda Ashram in New York, where Great. they invite artists and uh, have a um, 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 series of uh, concerts. And um, the interest was amazing. And the person who teaches uh, Indian Bratinatya dances there and Katak, uh, he was part of a um, um, raster of uh, teachers in Lotus Music and Dance. This is the only one center in New York which promotes traditional dance forms. And um, she introduced me to the director and she asked me, can you do a master workshop? And I said, of course. And that's how everything started with a couple of master workshops, which grew to a regular weekly dance classes. And that, that was 2006. And this year, we celebrate 10 years of Bulgarian folk dance. So you have a company. Yes. Gorana Dance Company. Yes. Was that the time that you established the company and you decided, okay, maybe it's time for me to have something bigger to spread the, my mission? Or when did you decide yes. to start the company? In 2006, I didn't start it right away with the notion, I will, this is my company, but I encouraged my students to participate in the so-called open houses for the Lotus Music and Dance. They were bi biannual. And there were performances with performances uh, before other students and guests and family and uh, supporters of the organization. And you, you have to imagine that these are uh, people who are not dancers in particular. They are just uh, having a pure interest in Balkan or traditional dance forms. So I start working with them as if they are company because of I wanted them to look good, feel good on the stage, and of course make a, ni a nice impression so we have more students. And I said, yeah, and we will have a name for our group, and uh, Gorana is the name of my grandmother. Oh, great. Yes, so that's how very gently, you know, I have to be v very um, careful because um, some people are eager to perform. Some people are not so comfortable to be on stage because they said, I'm not a dancer. So to prepare a group, of, a mixed group of ages and a mixed group of professions and a mixed group of experience in movement, it is, it's not easy. But I have fun with uniting people, so. Are they mostly Bulgarians or you have different nationalities? And what is the difference teaching Bulgarians versus different nationalities? Yes. Is it easier with Bulgarians? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, at first, uh, we had more Americans. I shall say probably 80% were Americans. Oh, interesting. Because the, the uh, Lotus Music and Dance have history for more than 30 years. and. Uh, so at first were more Americans, and some of them took classes somewhere else, some saw performances or visited Bulgaria. 
And then when we started those open houses, of course, I uh, put in, uh, information in the Bulgarian consulate, and I said to friends of mine, and more Bulgarians start uh, hearing about the classes and about those uh, showings. And more Bulgarians start coming into the classes. And this was probably 2008 and 9, where the percentage between Americans and Bulgarians started to shift. And now it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. I have 90% Bulgarians, and I still have a couple of other nationalities. So which one is harder to teach? I think it's harder to teach Americans or other cultures because um, uh, Bulgarian rhythms are uneven rhythms and we have such a diversity and um, a richness of those uneven rhythms and they are not exposed to uneven rhythm. And the fact that Bulgarians probably listen more to Bulgarian music or listened when they live in, li uh, li um, uh, lived in Bulgaria. I think it's genetically uh, predisposed that they, right. they learn faster. So you also teach children. You also teach in the Bulgarian school in Upper West Side uh, yes. to Bulgarian children. Is yes. it different to, to teach Bulgarian children that are born here versus uh, yeah. Bulgarians that are born in Bulgaria? Yes. So in 2010, I was invited from the Bulgarian school Christo Botev on Upper West Side. Um, uh, again, after seeing us participating in concerts for the Bulgarian National Day, Independence Day, cultural, different cultural events. And I started with seven children. And last year we had 70. This year we have, we have 65 children Incredible. dancing. Mm. We have already seniors leaving the school because this school has a history of uh, 11, 12 years. So the one who started are already in universities. Mm, here is a place to mention that um, the, the boys and the girls who applied for universities, they, one of their essays were written about their experience in Gurana Junior. And when they sent me those, res uh, those uh, essays to read, it was such an incredible, um, appreciation of all the efforts and I think I will never stop doing this just because of um, those experiences of the children. Uh, teaching children, it's the similar uh, difference as with the adults because the one who came here in different ages, uh, four, five, seven, eight years old, w were um, more uh, informed. They saw more, they knew about the costumes, the rituals, everything. They they were easier to adapt to the program. And in the past two years, now I have four and five years old. These are children who are born in New York and who have one parent American, one Bulgarian. Um, it's very difficult for them. They can do the even rhythms, the hops and the marches and the prances. But when we have to do the uneven rhythm with emphasis and syncopation, it's a lot of sweat but fun in this the is studio. very interesting. Yeah. So it is genetically predispos predisposed, yes. I would assume. And, 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 and it's the same why Americans are better jazz musicians comparing right. for the rest of the world. I think they're yes. the be better because it's born in America. So yeah. it's the they same thing. They grew up thing. with this music. Yes. Why this Italians are the greatest uh, opera, opera singers. singers. We, yes. c we can have and, and like um, the Russian ballerinas, the Russian ballerinas yes. or the Tai Chi, Chinese Tai Chi yeah. masters. Yes. Or, um, we can look for other examples when something is really engraved in the culture of the country, how powerful this might be in right. preserving it. Gorana Dance Company received many honors, including a commemorative letter from the mayor, Bill de Blasio. How does it feel? Yes. Does it feel that, okay, I accomplished my mission, I'm on, my, on the right track? Yeah. You know what? Uh, this letter is really uh, um, uh, appreciation of the work, and I very much honor the office of the mayor de Blasio that they sent this to us. But I want this letter to give um, strength 
and determination to all the members. We have 23 members of the Gurana Dance Company at this point, and I started alone, and it, we were four for a long time, including my daughter and me, <laughs> and Correct. two Americans. So I, I wanted them to know that they have a mission because yes, I have the energy and the, the passion and the love to do this, but you know, I can do it alone, but the influence the company has today is different than just what, ha what right. it has been uh, along the years. So they were very surprised, they were very uh, happy, they were very uh, pleased to, the text is beautifully written uh, we're going to post it, um, scan it, and post it on our Facebook page. So everybody who wants to see the, yeah. uh, all the commemorative letters of uh, this 10th anniversary gala concert we had on April 2nd can see all the materials on our Facebook page. Now, for people that want to start something on their own, a dance company or a different company or even a company of any kind, would you say you cannot do it alone or because when you start something, you're no, usually alone. Yeah. But what other qualities and what do you have to go through besides perseverance, besides networking, collaborating? What are some other yeah. things that you have to go through and you did went through and mistakes that you did and yeah. you learned from? Yes. It depends on the company, but like, let's say, uh, dance involves community. And of course, I can be a solo performer and I still do a solo lecture demonstrations in major dance departments in New York State on a regular basis. But for me to uh, bring the essence of the dance, which is a community entertainment, and it has been for ages, I need people. And that's why I say that it's important to look for um, and, and raise uh, the company raise people who can continue my work when I get old and cannot jump yes. anymore. So that's a necessity specifically for the dance. But what is more important for people who want to start because it must, must feel, oh, this is too much, this is too hard, I cannot do this. Everybody can do their own, uh, walk their own path. What help me and this is probably part of my nature is that I'm a very energetic person. I set myself almost unreachable goals and I mm -hmm. work to achieve those goals. It's very important to stay focused and to know one, two, three, four, five, what is in the next month or two um, in the agenda of achieving this goal and never give up and stay positive and uh, learn from the mistakes because uh, I'm a human being and I also sometimes have down uh, time <laughs> and um, sad times uh, just to leave this moment as possible, as soon as possible because working with people is the hardest work, I yes. think, and nobody wants to see nervous or upset or grumpy choreographer or teacher. Or performer. So, or performer. <laughs> so yeah. nobody cares about what we are going about. Yeah. And we have to be there with our full spirit and heart. Now, you mentioned goals. Do you write them down or it's all mental internally for you? No, I don't write them down. I write myself a list of logistics and a list of steps just so I know where I am and I don't forget something. But somehow, a person, an artist, uh, I think everybody who does art is aware of the, of the curvy road we go and, and, and experience every single place we are. So as I said, when I returned in 2004, uh, I wanted to do contemporary art because I find that uh, in America it's still more acceptable, understandable, the audience is bigger for such art. But then, uh, when I started being invited as a lecturer in Bulgarian folk, I didn't say no. So okay. this was a sign from the universe. So open to possibilities. Exactly. Open. And, and, and I, I embraced all these opportunities, and I let them grow. Uh, there was a hesitation at some point, what I'm doing, because in 2006, 7, 8, I was uh, doing still contemporary art, and up until 2011, I run both groups of uh, contemporary and, and 
a folk group, and it was very difficult to work in the two fields. Um, but was it a conscious decision? Okay, I'm gonna let it go of the modern and continue with the Bulgarian, or uh, it was a decision. Although I don't think it's a it's a lifelong decision mm -hmm. because. Um, um, uh, dance can have many looks and uh, I can think and I see now that the company is even pre uh, prepared to do a contemporary version of Bulgarian folk. That's what I wanted to ask if you ever thought of combining yes. both of them. Yes, and we have been talking for some years now to do the legend of Kaliakra girls. I don't know if you know that's a very old legend in Bulgarian history and yes. uh, which, he, which gives an option to use contemporary and folk. And here I am coming back to 1998 when I came here to explore contemporary and folk dance vocabulary, um, you know, blend it in one. So maybe in the next two years we'll try this. I don't know. But I'm really open for possibilities. I, I don't just walk one path. And that forget is great. The, the small ones. Right. Because sometimes, even if you're in a forest and you'll follow the main road, the most tasty strawberries are on the sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, sometimes we set goals and we want to achieve them, but this is a wonderful example of when we take a detour and we still achieve the same goal, but it's not the way we thought we'll exactly. achieve it. Yes. It just takes detour because maybe we have to learn something. And we learn more, we see more, we become more. It's scary to, t to turn to the right and go deeper into the forest. Right. And yet again, you will turn left and, and go on the main track. But right there, you can find a magnificent, yeah. rare flower, a beautiful rock, make fabulous picture, listen yes. to the bird. So uh, I think courage also is part of uh, someone who wants to reach heights, have to be courageous and yeah. just go for it. Sometimes, you know, I see people, they set goals and then they work on them. Uh, they have a, they want to start something. They work on it and it doesn't work out. So they give up. They think it has to happen now or their own way. Yeah. Or the other example, they said something they want to achieve and then they just think that's the only way. They have a set mind how they want to achieve it and they never look left and right. Yeah. Which you give great example first of perseverance so that don't let the obstacles stop you but also just challenges. Yeah. I and think then the look for the other detours. Yeah, mm. I think the obstacles can be used as a force rather than a barrier because I believe that if something starts to become really th true, uh, uh, really difficult, it says that you're on the true road, but, but the universe tests you. Do you really believe you will get there? I like that. <laughs> I need that sometimes because sometimes, you know, I have my own company and I'm working and it's really difficult and sometimes I doubt myself, but that's really yes. good. Um, and yet again, uh, I don't think that we shall be so stubborn and to just go this road. Right. It depends. I mean, uh, there is no recipe for success and I think that... Maybe um, self-awareness more. Yes. Aware. And, and I think there is, again, so many life examples about why 10 years are so important uh, in, in achieving and uh, reaching goals or heights. And, uh, because if you give uh, something to a 10 months baby and a 10 years old boy or a girl, they will comprehend differently. They, you cannot ask a baby, 10 month baby for a, a responsibility, but you can ask the 10 years old. In other words, you need those 10 years, and Martha Graham even said, a dancer needs 10 years to become a good dancer. So you have to work some time to see the results. Now, how do you see Goran in the next 10 years? 10 years. Because you already passed the 10 yes. years mark. Yes, uh, we had a very joyous first gathering after the gala, and everybody's so determined to start learning new dances right away. Um, I see uh, inviting more uh, musicians and singers, so we become a bigger ensemble. I definitely would like to try uh, um, a project where I uh, do contemporary and, and folk in one. 
Um, we will continue our um, concerts for the Bulgarian American community and festival participations. The next one is on uh, June 4th in Pennsylvania. Um, we will expand our outreach educational program. We have already phone calls. Can we join the, the practices? So great. we will be in the studio oh, and we're growing. Stuff. So maybe we have to look for a bigger studio. <laughs> Wonderful. Very soon. So nothing really changes. Um, just keeping, keeping the hard work. Would and you say that's your mission in life? Um, I think so, because um, I have been with people since uh, 18 years of age, because when I graduated high school, and I applied and were accepted in Institute for Bulgarian Folk Music and Dance, where I studied uh, extensively the ethnography and all those uh, folkloric regions and the dances and everything to become a leader. That was the title, a leader of folk ensemble and a teacher of folk dance. And it was under the uh, umbrella of the Bulgarian Minister of Culture, that particular institute, um, two years uh, associate degree. And then I started the next year doing uh, classes in the local uh, cultural center. Um, so I started teaching at the age of 19, and I kept doing this uh, since then. And I think my mission is to, to, to be with people and, and raise generations and uh, give the sense of community and, and help building up new friendships because it is so dearly beautiful to see the children from the school and their parents dancing on, on one concert, um, the, the March 3rd, the National uh, Independence Day, um, and, and then to hear in the dressing room who did a mistake and who <laughs> did something good and in internal family conversations. Yes. It is beautiful to see how they connect on a different level, on a cultural, on something which is heritage and which will be forever such. No, that remind me, I was a dancer for many years and it remind me backstage, we, we used to do that. Yes. <laughs> we did mistake and, and the audience never noticed, but we exactly. were so self-conscious. Yeah, because we know the choreography. Yeah. yeah. Now, before we end, I wanted to complete the statement referring to yourself. She is... She is the powerhouse. <laughs> oh, I like that. Powerhouse. I like that. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Elisabetta, for joining me. It was such a pleasure to meet Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucia. And I have a little gift for you. Ooh, Maybe you, I like gifts. you can join Ooh. one of our dance practice. This is our Maybe company t-shirt. With, with, oh, great. Maybe yes. I can come with my son. Yes. This is wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Well, thank you so much thank again. You. That's all from us. Thanks for watching She Is on Woman to Woman TV. If you like this episode, please share it with your friends and leave me a comment below and tell me which guests do you want to see next on the show and also what other shows do you want to see on Woman to Woman TV. I'll see you next time and until then, don't forget you are unique, use it to your advantage and each day go beyond yourself. Bye for now.